comes this crazy thing. Look at this thing. So that is some homemade uh, rock buggy crazy thing. That's a V8 trail rig. Looks like a desert romper. You hear him? That sounds killer. Hey, welcome everybody. Just wanted to say a couple things about this Duraback product uh, in my initial experience. One thing I didn't anticipate was that the wood that I am coating with this stuff has been sitting in my garage on this trailer, drying out for six months. And uh, the first layer did get absorbed really quickly to the point where it became nearly transparent and kind of cost me to question it right off the bat. The second challenge was, as I was kind of dealing with the initial shock of that, as you're using your product out of your tray, you're rolling it on, it's pretty consistent. And then after a few minutes, the moisture starts to leave the product and you're left with the big chunks. So you end up having kind of a very inconsistent surface. And that became a pretty steep learning curve for me and I'm glad I practiced on the other sides that I'm not going to be looking at so that this final side will be probably the best of all of them. Overall I think this stuff's going to work out great. Um, really happy with once you get the layers stacked up on it. In this next little stop action here you'll see I'm working on the roof. Keep your eye on the front slanted section that has those patches of spackling there. When the camera angle changes, just watch how uh, the first coat really gets absorbed quickly into this wood. But again, I'm happy with it. Um, I do have some opinions about it, but the guys were very helpful. I think it's going to work. And just stay tuned here. You'll see the rest of the video and how it all turned out in the end. So thanks for watching. All right, so we've got our two coats on the roof of the rough. See how you can still see the wood pattern in there. Now I noticed coat one going on, it really just absorbed into the wood where it, it was like almost perfectly clear. So as much as I was discrediting the product as having a very thin and light first coat, I think it's just my, uh, my product. <laughs> My wood is just uh, absorbing all of it. So that's probably the necessity for the fourth coat. So we got two coats on the front, two, one coat underneath there. I'm about to do coat number four on here of the smooth and coat number, coat number four on here of the smooth. I'm continuing to find little in, uh, consistencies in the wood that I'm patching and this, this final front piece like I keep saying I'm gonna do a real good finish job on so where it's about one going on one o'clock and uh, this stuff is not that easy to work with as it starts out very thin and then it gets real thick quick and all I've done is uh, I started to add some thinner to it when it thickens up so I get my money out of it I don't like throwing away the big globs of stuff so stuff's not cheap all right, people, so we're coming along. I'll update you here in a bit. Okay, working my way around. I got the final and fourth coat on the back here. It's still pretty wet there. So now we're working our way around here with the fourth coat there, sealing it pretty, looks like it's pretty solid. Some of these third coat areas, you can still 
sometimes see a little bit of wood grain, but I'm thinking this fourth one is gonna do it. So we'll give that a shot. And the beauty of this is six months from now, if I keep finding stuff, I can just come right back and coat over it again. Again, weight might be interesting. So we'll keep on working. All right, it's 410. I've got two coats textured, one coat clear on the front. Two coats textured, two coats clear on this side. So this side's done. Two coats clear, two coats textured on the back. This side's done. I've got two coats texture, one coat clear on the top, and it's four o'clock, like I said. So we're letting it just um, dry right now. Get a nice good hour or two. I'm gonna come back and I will finish all but that other side. And then I'm gonna spend the whole day tomorrow getting that other side as sano as I can. And then at the end of the day tomorrow, I'm gonna get that side done. It'll be done next weekend or sometime during the week. I'll get a crazy wild hair. Maybe I'll put the windows and doors in, but we're real close. So we'll be back. In a All right, 619. And I came back out about an hour ago. Did another coat on here. And uh, if you can see, it's just barely tacky, but it looks to me like this wood my, my boy's in there, so it's bouncing up and down, but it looks to me like this final four coat process has completely sealed this wood. You can see all this. And I mean, it's, it's kind of dry. It's a little bit tacky, not enough to leave fingerprints, but I think I'm happy with the finished product. You know, all I care is that the rain is kept out, it's durable, it's got a built-in UV protectant, it's made for docks and boats, things that are exposed to sun and wet conditions, and it's meant to be very durable, and that's the reputation that it has. With all of that said, if I were to do this again, and I have a sneaking suspicion that I will be doing this again someday, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't be doing this. I, in other words, I would choose a different skin option, aluminum, fiberglass, etc. This is so much work, I didn't realize it with, with this four coat process because the wood just sucks the, the uh, product right into it. Um, as you can see here, you can still see the knot. This is three coats now, two of the textured, one of the smooth. And you can still see these knots and these things in here. Three coats of this stuff. So this may take more than four, four coats. Hopefully it won't. I'm about to find out because I'm going to I'm gonna uh, continue here in a minute with the fourth coat of smooth. But this front's going to be covered anyway. And from here down is going to be covered all the way back. We're going to run diamond plate from this little corner all the way back to clean up that look. Diamond plate under here. And then in the same spot in the back where it tapers up. If I had known how much work and how much stress I put myself through getting the uh, initial textured coat on, I would have definitely chosen a different option because I would have just taken like a, a deck waterproofing product and treated all the wood, you know, like um, some Thompson's water seal or whatever you know we're allowed to have in california these days but uh oh there goes some kind of crazy rig that's what's cool about the high desert that guy's going up into the desert to have fun so anyway yeah i would have i would have just treated the wood with like some thompson's water seal or some uh, other kind of waterproofing material that would just been easy to just roll on let it soak in and then i would have just done the aluminum or the fiberglass and then you do one side and you're done move on to the next one I just was kind of infatuated with the idea that I would have a completely sealed unit with this coating but I didn't realize how much of a commitment it was going to be 
and it turned out I needed twice the amount of product that I was told I would need. So the expense went up double, but like I said before in some of these other videos, I, I learned everything the hard way. So we're going to get back to uh, work here, and we're going to do these front coats. Should be the final coat here, and then this baby will be done. And then, of course, like I said, I'm leaving this for tomorrow. Hey, what's the voltage? Um, uh, 12.5. Okay, that's good? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. So it's been like two hours, 12.5 on that gel battery with just the LEDs? Yeah. Not plugged into the house? Cool. We're doing good. Alright. 7.20. Sun's going down. Worked all day. Took a couple breaks. Let stuff kind of set up. Applied more coats. Just going to give you the walk around real quick. So here we go. So this is the unfunny side we're going to work on tomorrow. This is the front. Again, this is going to be covered by diamond plate, but I really feel that it is going to be waterproof. I go back over a couple spots. Again, the knots, you know, these knots, they absorb that product. I'm going to go back over that. So that's four coats. This side's four coats. The top is now four coats. Very top, four coats. That slant, four coats. The back, four coats plus. So it's coming together. Saturday night, we're done. Been out here since, uh, I don't know, 10 o'clock or something like that. And uh, a lot of work, but I wanted to make sure it was right. And then, like I said before, I kind of got my technique down. This is still wet, so you can see the lines in it. But once it sets up and it's dry, you won't see any of those lines in the reflection there. If you can see that, it'll just be solid, glossy kind of. So, got my technique down. Kind of figured out how you can thin out. What's going on in there? <laughs> you guys ready to camp, huh? Mm -hmm. You stay in there, little girl, okay? You stay there. Stay. I figured out that you can actually thin out the textured product with a little bit of the uh, xylene, which you will not find in California, as you go to keep your texture consistent. Figured that out. I'm glad because again this will be the most viewed side. I'm gonna get this all sanded tomorrow. <sighs> and we're getting close. <laughs> this is the hardest part of this whole build. I thought coating it would be the easiest part of this build. You know, you just get over here and roll it on and go. But it has been the hardest part of this whole build, working with the product. It's not easy to use. If you have a dock. Because what? Because you have to push it down really hard. Underneath. Hey, bud. Hey, baby. If you have a dock, you have a flat surface, easy to use. You stand there and you roll it out. But if you're working on sides and you need to have some kind of consistent finish, of course, you can see it's not consistent, but that's as good as I could get it. You know, there's lines in there. There's bumps and stuff like that. And then there was this little... I kept getting these little paper things in the smooth stuff. I don't know what it's from, but you know what? This thing's going to be watertight. It's going to be comfortable. And um, I did not have to go plunk down 20 grand on a toy hauler. We own this thing outright. It's paid for, and we're done today. We're going to go watch Supercross. How's that tooth, buddy? Good. It's yanking it. Not yet. Let's just tie it, a string to the tooth and tie a string to Ellie and then let her take off after a rabbit. <laughs> Come on, baby. Just like, get me out of there. Good night, everybody. See you in the morning.
Can we do that one on camera too? Sure, but it's not coming out yet. How much time do you think we got left? Maybe a month. Hey everybody, it's Sunday, about 3.30, just after a little afternoon nap again, and i um, really dragging my feet. Don't feel like working, but I got one more side, and I'm going to push through and get this thing ready. So after today, we can do the windows, the vent, the door, and then that's it. You know, we can use it, aside from other things later. That funny noise is my kids taking off the gaffer's tape that I sealed the garage door with into the kitchen because when our air conditioning comes on, it actually sucks air from the garage in. And this sucker sitting in here wet last night, that fumes were so potent it was pulling it into the house. So I gotta say, as tough as it is to work with this stuff at times, it is super, super solid. See how it looks pretty consistent now, now that it's all dry. So today, we're going to sand this sucker. I'm going to zip this window up so no dust gets in there. And um, here we go. What you got there? This is the tape that we used to seal the house from the smell. Oh, coming in the house last night? Yeah. Because we had the garage shut mm -hmm. on the outside, so it wasn't airing out in here. Pretty potent, huh? Yeah. Yeah, alright, thanks buddy. So we're sanding away here and uh, spending a lot of time on the high wood marks trying to get it to blend here as best possible. It's, uh, it's about 86 out here and I just tested the air inside the camper and it was 87. My boy's in here hanging out. So we cranked up the AC in here. We'll check it out in a little bit, huh? Alright. Here. The first time that I've sought refuge from the heat outside in the camper, so this is the first time the camper is actually serving its purpose by getting me in out of the heat while I'm sanding out there in the sun. Whew. So while we're just hanging out in here, I uh, never got to really go over. I got those two flashlights mounted. I wanted them right by the door so that you can just reach in and grab them, you know, or you're on your way out and there's two of them there, one for each occupant. Me and you. Yeah, and then I put that big one there that was in my toolbox for about 10 years with the little rubber mount. And it kind of keeps me from bumping those, uh, break those, uh, switches, so. And that's our little, uh, gadget thing for phones, wallets, keys, glasses, you know, you hang your dirt bike keys up there and uh, whatever you need up out of the way. I try to get this stuff all up up out of the way so when we're hanging out in here rolling around we got max space. Over there we got a couple coat hangers and uh, we've been messing around with Kobe's little bed system. We're going to throw that together right, so, real quick. Uh, it's now about going on six o'clock and I've been standing for a long time and I don't know if you can tell but these are high very high spots here and I can still feel a little bit of a drop off there, but that's as good as that's gonna get, unless I get a planer out here or something. And all this, I've got a lot of this. This was all step off here. A lot of this is now really smooth. There's a little one here, um, but I think it's gonna be a lot nicer looking than the other side. So this one will be with my two days of experience. This is all smooth, 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 this line here. This one's a tricky one here. A lot of wood right here, sanded way down. You can see I just kept sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding to try to get it to blend as smooth as possible. From this corner, where this angle is, all the way back to the back one, that's going to be diamond plate. So this joint here that's all funky looking, it's going to be covered. The rest of this will be exposed with the coating. So now I'm going to take this tire off. Oh, first, after I sanded, I blew it all off with compressed air and then wiped it down several times with a really damp rag to get every ounce of dust off. And then I went over it with xylene, which um, you didn't see this here. Xylene looks just like this and uh, comes in a bottle. 
a can just like this and it starts with an X and ends with an NE. Of course this isn't it because this isn't legal in California or because xylene is not legal in California but something just like this. Uh, and I wiped it all down. Is it getting hot in there? Okay, we can hit the AC again if you want. I'm going to yank the tire off, tape off the frame, get to work. It is, uh, all right, 7.30, going on 8. And I was able to get two coats of the textured on. And I thought I'll just let this dry, because it's been an hour since I finished, and I can go right back over it with a smooth, but I'm going to let this dry tonight. Tomorrow night, I'm going to come back with some of that vinyl spackling, and I'm going to sano out some of the little divots. And then that'll dry one night, and then Tuesday night, I'm going to come out, pull the trailer out, and do the final two coats of, of the smooth. And any touch-up around that I need to do, uh, if I need to do any at all. And then next weekend, it's doors, windows, and stuff. There's the top. There's the top. And if we're lucky, there's that angled portion there. If we're lucky, what might we do next week? Can't. Like next Saturday, we could go up and into the desert, and maybe we could come back for you. Like we could go near Bell Mountain. Yeah. Or on Although we can't go there now because we just told a bunch of people. <laughs> or they could come hang out with us, and we could roast some marshmallows and hot dogs and play with some scorpions and stuff. All right, everybody, that's it for this weekend. Coming into the home stretch, we're bringing it in slowly but surely. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next weekend. Can we just record like a normal camera, please? Now the voice might be on there. Oh, it's going to be on there.